It was extremely scary because as soon as we came out, they told us to go back in. But we couldn't go back in because we were locked out. At that time, we heard a couple of explosions and it was really scary. I was hiding, but there was no place to hide. Terror and confusion as a financial district goes up in smoke for the afternoon commute home. A hydro, fire, a, a hydro vault rather, just outside the RBC building here at Young and King catches fire. And as you can see, parts of King still close this hour. Crews have yet to go in to make repairs. Again. I feel scared. And yeah, I'm, I thought I was going to die. Yeah, but it's really, really bad. Explosion after explosion rocks the financial district after an underground hydro vault catches fire. This man running in terror from Scotia Plaza just as the vault exploded in flames again. I don't know what happened. We, uh, we took the exit, the emergency stairwell. When we came out, we saw some explosions. Hey, I was literally uh, maybe five feet away from the explosion. It's still uh, going right now. It's still going on, yeah. The first blast was reported just after five near King and Bay, sending plumes of smoke high into the air. City News was inside the RBC building when it went off again. The gray smoke intensifying until it erupted in yellow and purple flames. Emergency responders quickly pushed everyone back. Much of the financial district was blocked off as a haze of toxic smoke covered the streets and bled into the PATH system. Causing the TTC to bypass King Station and reroute streetcars. Firefighters evacuated one building as a precaution. It's electrical fire, so there's a lot of plastics, uh, probably some coolants, oils, and, and whatnot in there. So, yeah. For over two hours, it burned. Firefighters forced to fight it from street level, unable to enter the vault until crews from Toronto Hydro arrived to de-energize it. It's found out now that the hydro crew that we have here, they're uh, an above-ground crew from uh, another place in the city, so we're still waiting for the underground crew. Just minding my business walking the dog and heard a loud bang. Thought it was odd. No one was hurt. There is no official cause yet, but fire crews speculate the rain and moisture may have played a role. It's really bad up there. I hope, uh, I'm hoping my team, they're still up there, and I hope they, they, they come back uh, down safely, and I'm praying for them. Now, just a few moments ago, we got an update from Toronto Hydro, and they say there's still no firm timeline for when King may reopen to traffic. But Toronto Hydro came under some criticism this evening for their response to the fire. For that, we go now to Janelle Amasa. Well, that's right, Amanda. Fire crews cleared the scene uh, a couple hours ago, and the scene now belongs to Hydro. They actually just gained access to one of the vaults about 15 minutes ago, uh, and the uh, one of two vaults. The other one still remains inaccessible because there is still smoke in that area. Now, there did seem to be some volleying back and forth between Toronto Fire and Hydro this afternoon about just what was happening, what was going on, and there were lots of questions about the timeline of the response by Toronto Hydro because their specialized underground crews didn't arrive until about eight o'clock almost three hours after the fire started but they say that they they did send their first available crew and they weren't actually able to do much simply because of the intensity of the smoke we had a crew arrive about 5 15 or 5 30. Uh, they first arrived on the scene, uh, assessed the situation, and then called. And we had another crew um, that was able to get here shortly after. They had to come from Scarborough. So, as you can imagine, at that time of the day, uh, the traffic is bad, and our crews are traveling in the same traffic as everybody else. So, they got here as quickly as they could, and that's when they started that switching process, which is basically isolating the power to that area. Um, so, there wasn't really a delay 
the way that it works with Toronto Hydro is we have crews that are on standby and we have crews that work 24 hours a day, but overnight we do have fewer crews and we don't necessarily keep uh, these specialized crews on hand because we reserve that type of work usually for the day, but we always have them available on standby so that we can call them if we need them. Um, they did get here uh, a little later, but that wasn't a delay in any type of response. Um, they got here as quickly as they could, but they weren't able to do any work earlier than that anyway. It's not something that you want to just rush into. This is uh, dangerous electrical equipment, as we've seen as, as the situation unfolded earlier today. There were some people who were describing some pretty scary moments. Um, so our crews have to be uh, mindful of that, and that is their priority, is their safety right now. Um, so there is a lot of work that has to be done to make sure that the, the vault is safe to access, and that is really what it can be quite time-consuming, but it's necessary. Now, the fires also raise questions about just how often these aging uh, hydro vaults are inspected. Hydro says they are inspected every single year. Now, a number of buildings were affected by this outage, and uh, fire, Hydro says that they're hoping to get uh, that power back up in time for business hours tomorrow morning. And as we mentioned, they've just accessed uh, that vault and just uh, turned off the power to that vault about 15, 20 minutes ago. So they're going to be working into the night.